Hey everyone, this is Joe Shermer. Uh, I'm the owner of Dirty Girl Produce in Watsonville, California, which is in South Santa Cruz County. It's uh, 43 acres of organic mixed veg. And I got into farming as a student when I was doing my undergrad. I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up on the beach. And when I started studying in college, I kept getting hits of what's wrong with the world and what can we do? And farming kept coming up. And so just all roads seemed to lead to farming for me. And so I spent four or five years on farms, learning how to do it before I ended up going to UCSE agroecology program, the, the six month apprenticeship program, and then ended up moving around again. I ended up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, managing a small farm. I went over through Big Island and Maui. I traveled around. I just saw a lot of, did a lot of farm visiting, a lot of volunteer, a lot of living in tents and being a young 20s person working on farms. Dirty Girl Produce, our, our brand, which was started by two friends of mine, Jane and Ali, in I think 96, they did, either 95, 96. And I started working them. I kind of trailed them. They did it a couple of years. And then I started working for them after having worked on a few different farms. And then I worked for them for a couple of years and they got tired and wanted out. And so I just kind of bought their truck and got the lease of the three acres they were on and just continued. And it's been 20 years. So that's how Dirty Girl Produce, you know, how we get our name is from the two original Dirty Girls. And we just continue. We grow a mix of row crop veggies, all that kind of good California cuisine that we, that we grow for. So we've had our whole model based around our Bay Area farmer's markets. Right now we're doing five. And so we've really picked up a, a huge list of restaurants that I think in a lot of, a lot of areas you you know i think a little little farms like us would be pretty stoked to have a few of these restaurants couple maybe but the san francisco and bay area food scene is huge and there's just a huge amount of talent and a lot of young people that come into san francisco have traditionally you know moved to san francisco to be part of the food scene to work in kitchens front of the house back of the house you name it there's also a lot of tech and so you get a lot of people, you know, paying their full paychecks, eating out. And so we're, we're kind of like the farm that's in the, in the midst of all that sort of stuff. So what we try to do is, is just have the highest quality, fresh produce, you know, everything along the, the supply side, you know, we're just committed to quality, whether it's getting seed, <clears throat> the work that's done in the field, which is, it's just so it's so labor intensive you know we don't we don't cut corners and uh, you know all of our the land we have is is really has been selected based on the quality of the soils and the microclimate and everything like that so uh, you know we just put a lot of attention into also post-harvest handling how we wash how we sort how we trim how we present how we you know cool things down <clears throat> wet things down, keep it dry, you name it. <clears throat> every little every little item needs to be treated a different way. And since we're doing, you know, throughout the year, we're doing probably over 40 different veggies and <clears throat> including strawberries and tomatoes. And, uh, we, you know, we've extended our value-added lineup with jars of, of things. So we, every, every one of those things needs to be handled differently. So I try to, to grow things that I like and that people are asking for, that people want and people are willing to pay for, really, because you can grow a lot of good food, but if there's nobody buying it, there's really you know, no point in growing it unless you just have a backyard garden and you're doing it for yourself, right? I try to hit all those little trends, you know, if you watch and pay attention to, to what, what people are putting on the plate, what people are preparing if you engage a lot with chefs i mean I, I i've always felt that people that work in kitchens are very 
similar demographic to the people that are working on farms, whether you have your, you know, your, your laborers that are just grinding out dishes or you have your chefs who are into it because it's a creative thing that they're, you know, it's the culinary arts. It's the same with a lot of people that are farming that I know on small scale is we're doing it for a reason other than just to get a paycheck. So I've always thought that engaging a lot with the chefs and the people that are buying the, the food is really influences what I grow, how I grow, <clears throat> how we present. Obviously, you know, someone likes something, you, you grow it. Pretty simple. And so we've really developed Dirty Girl Produce, our, our brand. It's a real recognized brand. People really recognize it for the high quality of the produce that we bring to market. And also, it's all over the menus in restaurants all over San Francisco, East Bay, Santa Cruz. And it's just enough to put your name on their menu and people will read that and people remember that, you know. So we've really worked on, you know, just kind of upholding the brand. We also, we sell merch, you know, we sell hats and, you know, people want stickers and hoodies and they like the name. It's cutesy patootsy and they identify with it. And, you know, so we sell hats and, and hoodies and stuff. We also run out of them all the time. It's really, a lot of times kind of annoying because, you know, you bringing all this wet veg to market in a refrigerated truck and, and you trying to bring hoodies in that too. It can, you know, it's, you know, trying to keep up with inventory. So, but anyway, you know, it also helps in the branding of our, our farm. And so, you know, we have a real rec. People remember the name. I didn't have a cell phone when I started um, farming. I didn't have a laptop. I think I was writing my friend's letters on paper and then everything really has evolved. And, I've tried as best as I can to keep up with social media, with keep up with having a website. And of course, there's so much advantage to being savvy and knowing your way around social media and advertising and just be, having a web pres presence. When people want to find your stuff, you want to make sure they can find it easily and they can contact you and they can find out where to buy your food and they can see a story about your farm and pictures about your farm. So, so we, you know, we, we got on Facebook a long time ago and then Instagram and we're more Instagram types these days. And I think it really helps to kind of push our brand and our farm. And of course now with using barn to door as an online platform is, has been huge. It's just been a crazy, crazy time. And I think that everybody, whether you're a farmer or not, agree. It's been nuts. And so what we've done is our whole model has been, like I said, based around these five farmers markets that we do now and everybody that's within that vicinity. So essentially what we did when, you know, we have this huge percentage of our sales, which is from restaurants cut, you know, COVID, it's like, boom, all the restaurants closed. You know, seriously, there's like maybe five, 10 percent uh, people still doing stuff. I'm, I, my thoughts originally, because you try to think it through, what is it going to be to totally change the way you do business? So I imagine like, oh, all the old farmers market customers are no longer able to come to the market, you know, and they're going to close markets, which they ended up not ever closing our farmers markets. But I was worried about them. I think three of our markets were still full service so the people can't touch their food until they buy it, you know, and, and someone does it. And, and another couple of it's like modified, like we bag your beans and certain things and then sell. And so essentially what it's done is cut it in half. You just can't get as many people through. There's not as many people at the markets. So, you know, we've had to offset the loss in sales at farmer's markets with restaurants to try and, and started this box program. And it's been huge, hugely successful. And as soon as we opened up our, our, what we call a box program, so you can get a subscription. So you, you know, like a CSA, you can get a 20 week subscription or you can just order week to week whenever you want at any given location, you know? And so as soon as we opened that up, especially in the early days of the COVID restrictions, it was maddening. I mean, we couldn't get enough boxes ready. So like, let's do delivery box program delivery. And we did it. And I definitely saw a few of our customers 
But then we saw a whole bunch of people that were not our customers that knew our brand, but don't make it to the market and don't have the ability to really buy, but they still are aware of us and want good food. And so all of a sudden it opened up this huge um, demographic of people that we've been driving by that now we're delivering to. Of course, a lot of people, you know, either don't know farmers markets. That's always been, you know, the educational component to what I've needed to do is like try to convince people that farmers markets are great places to buy food, which they are. That said, it doesn't always work for people. And so it's so good to be able to mix it up, you know, and that's essentially what, you know, what we've really done here is mix it up. And, you know, one of, one of the, the biggest impacts that I saw right away is that we're getting people to pay not just full retail, which is important, but we're getting them to pay in advance. You know, I essentially think like we had somewhere between year round 10 and $20,000 worth of aging that is just on any given day owed to us, right? So if you just think of operating capital, that ch that's changed us in such a big, helpful way. Yeah, I think the other thing that happens when you go online, and I've noticed it now, not just with our um, box program with Barn to Door, but also like with Square, when people, when they, when they swipe a card, you have information. You can, you can look at the analytics of all that and try and figure out who, what, where, who's buying what, what are their emails. You send an email out to your barn to door list and you say, hey, we've got this. You let people know what you have. You can do it quickly. People are on their phones, on their computers all the time. And so you can really get a, a better handle on, you know, getting up to date. People don't have to show up the day of farmer's market and see what's for sale. You know, they can, before they, before you go, you can see what's going to be there. And I think that's really important. And, and we're learning everybody's names and I have, you know, there's hundreds of customers that I know by face for years. I've known some of these people for 10 years plus and I talk to them and I know all about them, but I don't even know their names. And this whole thing really, people's names are popping up a lot more. And I think it's really helpful. It's really, you know, to call customer service is, is really important what we do. And sometimes it can be so anonymous, you know, you know, and that's what a lot of people in direct marketing like is that you are interacting with the farm, you're interacting with the farmer, it's food with a story. And it's a, it's a next level, even though you, <clears throat> you might think that all these contraptions are separating us right? Technology, but it also can bring us closer, you know, by tracing people, having information, having emails, you know, people come up and say, Hey, I got the e email. It said, you know, whatever you have cilantro flowers or you have, Oh, I saw that. And, you know, I, I get on uh, Instagram and I've had some, a lot of fun on the early days of the box program, doing it with my daughter, Pearl, who's six and she's hilarious and super cute. And people come up and go, oh my God, that little girl, I love her. What's her, what's her deal, you know? And so, you know, we've had a lot of fun. It, I think there's, there's an, a, an ability there to connect with people and build community around the food that, you know, you certainly can do in other ways as well. But I think a lot of this is about casting the net out wide, right? And I think that that's what one of, one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Every single farm is a different small business, right? We're also different. We use our accounting different. We use, we have different soils. We have different counties, different states. We're just all over and every, we do everything so different. And so I really think Im important for me in this whole COVID era is to really be open-minded and cast the net out wide. We have to evolve and we have to see what works and what doesn't work. I really, I, I feel like this box program has been huge in that because it's been the first year and it's been such an experiment. And so I've just tried to really change it up quickly and, and try to figure out what I'm attached to emotionally. And I, I'm attached to certain ways that we do things. And I have certain internal fears about doing things differently, right? 
And so what I've had to do is really get good at being new at stuff. And I think it's really important for us as farmers to let go of everything that's not serving us. Even if you're like, that's why I'm doing it, or that's what's important to me, you know, this is sustainability, right? Social, environmental, economic. And so you have to keep a business mindset. You have to really figure out what's working, what's not working, and really crunch all those numbers and then cut away when it's not working for you. I'm not going to I'm not going to preach to you about organics or about what you need to put in your soil. But I think on the economics, you know, I think people, you end up learning by losing money, you know? So, you know, we lose money a lot when we, when we do things that are not serving us. So I think, you know, hopefully we can, you know, experiment and figure out ways to, to make our businesses more economically sustainable. I hope you visit the farm online and uh, give me a shout out. You guys got any questions about what we do or, you know, any, anything farm related, look me up on Instagram or you can go to our website and just shoot an email. And I hope everybody's doing well, getting ready for winter. And I hope your farms are out there and you're all thriving and peace. Thank you.